that is strong and a group that trusts us and backs us. So uh, just before we get into the numbers, there's something that I wanted to highlight. Yeah, so now talking about the business, the best part of the business right now is the growth momentum. Um, we have uh, to date are ahead of CMP that last year in revenue by 21%. Uh, within that, the headline news is that Noorpur is the fastest growing milk in Pakistan today. Uh, so it has a 54% volume growth. And we'll talk later how that is critical to our strategy of achieving sustainable uh, performance by the business. So this was one of the big strategic pillar. We'll touch on it later. And we are very happy to report that uh, we are growing rapidly. Uh, we, again, as part of strategy, to, we wanted to launch margin creative products. Um, and our flavored milk and slightly salted butter are in the market and are doing well. Uh, we have also built some significant international business collaborations. We are the sole supplier of cheese to McDonald's Pakistan. Um, and we do a sizable business with Unilever and KFC. Uh, in terms of the bad, there are headwinds. Uh, you are all aware that uh, with the scenario of flood, it poses a particular challenge to dairy industry in Pakistan, which is the availability of raw milk. Uh, we've had uh, about various estimates, but our own estimates is about 1.45 million animals were displaced, which meant A, a drop in uh, the volume of the, uh, the raw milk, and B, uh, a significant drop in productivity because of the typical the outbreak of viral diseases post-flood. All of that put together, add to it the, uh, the, the, the currency uh, value where we stand, the devaluation. Uh, I think this is this challenge will continue to put pressure on milk price. We'll see an inflationary trend there, uh, and that is something that we'll have to plan for and ex expect uh, going into 2023. Um, we are very happy to report that we did a very extensive benchmarking uh, exercise in the organization. As a result, we identified certain cost areas where there was headroom to improve. Uh, so in order to bring our costs down, we are undertaking um, a biofuel uh, shift in terms of steam production. Uh, we hope to start that actually December this year ahead of schedule. Likewise, leveraging the group's strength, uh, we have completed an extensive solar study. Uh, the, the foundation work of that is in progress. And by the end of first quarter, we would be fulfilling our uh, one megawatt of our energy needs through solar. Uh, in this inflationary in environment, it's critical to be able to take prices. Uh, we have success, we'll talk in detail about it a little later of uh, where we have successfully taken prices. Um, and a very important pillar for our growth is actually building a fit for future route to market. Um, and we've done significant improvements on that. And it is also in rollout as we speak. Vazim, if you can quickly talk through this. So, um, as you will note, and we are happy to report that our uh, revenue nine months, 2022 versus same period last year has grown by 21%. Uh, we hit 8.1 billion versus 6.7 billion for the nine months. Um, and I think one of the other good news from our perspective is that by uh, mid of October, we've crossed the full year revenue for uh, 2021. So Alhamdulillah, our growth is phenomenal and we, uh, we will continue to drive and push our growth. Um, as we've uh, highlighted earlier that there's been significant cost pressure driven by uh, increase in raw milk prices, inflation, devaluation. So uh, you can see that pressure on the gross profit. However, uh, as Osman will talk in the later stages, uh, that we've taken actions as well to ensure that uh, our margins come back in line. And uh, inshallah, we should be able to see that uh, coming through. So as of now, our uh, P&L is, is 
significantly higher. Our loss is significantly higher than last year. Predominantly, all of it is driven by the sudden inflation that came into uh, existence after April um, and is continuing to haunt the industry overall. Uh, and uh, that's where we stand right now. Usman? Yeah. So uh, thank you, Vaseem. Now, in terms of building this business for future, uh, we've tried to put very simple, actionable strategy in place. The two key pillars is a value-led growth focus and reduction in cost. Very simple. But it is really important when we go into deeper into it, what do we mean by value-led? Uh, the, this company, Fauji Foods, over the last uh, uh, eight years or so has been has experienced growth in past, but the growth, most of it came in a commoditized tea creamer segment where it was really difficult to build value and pass on prices. So as we, the company grew, it was not able to uh, build a sustainable margin. Therefore, we've embarked upon a portfolio pivot where we want to grow the value added portfolio. We want to grow UHT milk where the competition is such that are also value oriented and uh, therefore the ability to grow margin is high. Um, and we'll talk about it. And that's where um, if you look at overall, our value added portfolio has actually increased from 35 to 53% of portfolio when compared to same period last year. Secondly, further, in order to further this strategy, there is a clear intent to actually uh, introduce margin accretive products. We've launched chocolate flavored milk this year. We've launched slightly salted butter, a few butter extensions, which all uh, play the same role in portfolio. Uh, linked to this, to a portfolio pivot towards value oriented, linked to this is ability to price. That is really critical in times like these. Uh, in Pakistan and also globally, we are going through an inflationary time and we must have a portfolio which can withstand price increases. And we are happy to report that within this year, in order to cover the massive inflation that we faced in the summers, we've been able to pass it on to the, to the, uh, to the consumer and recover the cost to a great degree. Uh, route to market in Pakistan, it's critical for us to build our products. So there we have now uh, reflected the same value oriented approach in our portfolio to our route to market strategy as well. Uh, and in our, which means specifically, what does it mean? It means that we have, we are now focusing on 94 markets that contribute 90% of the value added business in Pakistan. Uh, so on one side, it reduces cost. On the other side, it allows us to really play hard in the market where we want to grow. Um, institutional sales is something very important for us. I would just like to highlight that uh, we did an exercise a few months back uh, where we identified various military institutions um, that contribute almost 5 billion um, in their purchases of dairy products. Uh, we went to the concerned quarters, we leveraged our strength within Fauji Foundation to go after this business and successfully landed a tender of 1.4 billion rupees uh, for supplying skim milk powder. This continues, uh, will continue till June next year. Um, and there are more avenues where we want to build this inherent uh, uh, connection that we have uh, with, with, with the wider organization and leverage uh, this to the best of our business. Um, on the second part, in terms of uh, reducing cost, the idea is to, again, very simply induce the gross margin product. There, I've talked about the energy products. We've, at the same time, also um, localized one of the packaging, which will yield a significant amount in terms of uh, margin. Um, and there are other more uh, detailed factory efficiency projects in place to uh, continuously look into areas and uh, reduce the cost. Uh, and these, all of these items put together will start kicking in at various point in time, starting from last quarter um, and going into the first half of next year. And we hope to add a significant amount to our gross margin 
and we plan to actually arrive at the targeted benchmark of gross margin by virtue of these cost initiatives. Yeah. Usman, if you could just give me 10 seconds, I would uh, stop share and reshare. There is some technical glitch here. Yeah? Please, please. <clears throat> right. So, yeah. So the next slide is just uh, uh, focusing a little bit of more going into our distribution footprint, where I said that we have now refocused to 91 towns from a previous of 290. So it's a major uh, focus exercise. We went through a lot of insight based in terms of where to go. Um, and as we did this, we've been able to grow 150% on one of the key SKUs of milk, one of the largest SKU in UHT milk, which is 250 ml. Uh, and we've actually increased our in-store availability by 38% versus 2021. So we are kind of refocusing. This strategy connects with the portfolio pivot of selling more value-added product. We, it costs us less and it brings us more sales. Uh, so we are on that strategy as we speak. Next slide. Uh, I've talked about it. So I've talked about the uh, the the upper, the synergies that exist with the group, uh, and uh, we have already secured a 1.4 billion um, tender there, which we are servicing. Um, at the same time, a very big win for us is to win McDonald's account. It took us almost three years of extensive work to complete all the certifications which are required for uh, successfully completing the McDonald's audit. And we are now a global supplier to McDonald's. So right now we are servicing 100% of McDonald's Pakistan, and we hope to close first international uh, option within McDonald's network fairly soon so that we can start exporting cheese to them. Uh, so it was a big thing for us. It is. Uh, it required a lot of investment. It required a lot of skilling up. Uh, but we are very happy to report that Noorpur is uh, is what you experience in every McDonald's burger in Pakistan for now. So how what has so all of these strategies that we've talked about? How has it impacted business? So in terms of the first of all, it is really important that we were able to regenerate growth in the business. Uh, and I think if you look at the blue bar, that clearly indicates the growth trend that has set in. Um, and uh, we have started hitting record uh, revenue and volumes for our business uh, in, last, in last two months. So that's something which is very heartening that allows us then to work on costs. Um, uh, we've been able to, as I talked about earlier, the if you look at in May, June, July, the orange table, that's where massive inflation hit Pakistan in terms of devaluation, in terms of raw milk price increase. We've been, because of the portfolio pivot, where we have more value added uh, uh, portfolio in our total revenue, and also a competition which is value oriented, we have been able to pass that price and actually recover the gross margin and get out of that pressure. And that I think is really important for us going forward. Um, from here onwards, what we expect in last quarter, uh, the COGS initiatives to kick in. Um, and basically that should be our last lap, taking us to a sustainable business performance. So in the end, I think uh, what I want to say is that in Pakistan and globally, food and agriculture remains a significant segment. I think particularly in Pakistan, we always consider, we've always considered ourselves as a milk rich country. But if you look at the climate impact on dairy industry alone last year, it was not just floods by the way. In end April last year, we had a record heat wave. So animals 
productivity got affected. Then there was lumpy skin disease, which had happened prior to flood, a viral outbreak in the herd. Then there were floods. So even in Pakistan, we are going through a, a time where the demand for food products and particularly dairy is on the rise. We've seen a 25% growth in UHT plain white milk category. Uh, I've been in this industry in 11, for 11 years. This is unprecedented. Uh, this industry is on a long-term growth, but such high growth is unprecedented in the industry. So, uh, so it's the right segment to be in, and the segment is going to grow. Our play in the segment is essentially to fix the basics of the business so that we start hitting our straps and uh, we are able to realize the potential of Noorpur brand and the potential of Pakistan market. It is very clearly out there. Um, and by virtue of fixing the basics in the business, we are, we are now seeing early wins um, uh, in, in the business. I've already talked about portfolio pivot, that it is really critical for us in terms of uh, building a sustainable future for the company. Um, and I've also talked about the last point in terms of uh, volume growth pricing and efficiency uh, that we expect uh, will build our exit margin significantly. Um, thank you so much, Usman, Saab, for your detailed uh, presentation. Uh, now we will uh, begin the uh, Q&A session. And I would request all the participants to please uh, put their questions in the chat box so that, I, so that I can ask the questions directly to the management. Mm -hmm. um, so we have more than 70 participants who have joined us today. And uh, I'll begin with the Q&A. Uh, so... Um, the first question um, is from Mr. Ali Khalid, and he's asking about what products fall under the value added category. Uh, so for our portfolio, Ali Saab, the, the products that we consider value added are butter, cheese, cream, flavored milk. And if I talk about margin equitative, even plain white UHT milk over a longer period of time for this business is margin equitative. So the scale that we want to build in a profitable manner is in plain white uh, UHT milk. Please keep in mind that up till now, it has been in the tea creamer. Now, that doesn't mean that we just stop selling tea creamer. We will sell it profitably, uh, but the scale uh, that we look to build is in a far more uh, sustainable plain white UHT milk. On top of it, we already have butter, where we are the biggest butter brand in Pakistan in retail. Um, and we have very specific plans to build on that even further. And on cheese, we've got one of the largest accounts in burger business. And we've got some very important developments coming up to uh, create new avenues in the segment. And flavored milk, um, cream. Okay, so uh, there's a follow-up question from Mr. Ali Khalid, and he's asking that, isn't it better to have a more consolidated product portfolio rather than full spectrum? Uh, if you are in dairy business in Pakistan, it is really important to have a full spectrum. Because if you understand the operations of the business, um, you're, when you go into processing, you will sometimes be creating fat, and it's really important to price it out. Sometimes you are creating whey as a byproduct. It's really important to price it out. So in dairy, actually, given the back end of dairy, it is really important to have a, uh, have a big portfolio. Uh, and I think we are in a, we, that's where we actually have an intrinsic advantage. Um, so we just need to build it and shape it in the right way. Uh, but it helps. The back end of the industry is such that it's a must. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, I see a lot of questions related to uh, food uh, industries, dynamics, and what are the key threats and uh, risks to the business in general? If you could comment on that, please. So look, the risk to the business again is um, uh, inflation and pricing. Um, I think that is something given the, and particularly I'm talking about dairy and raw milk. I think going forward, that is uh, something that the companies that are able to price up are the ones that will be able to ride this storm. Um, and uh, that is the opportunity as well. 
because this is an uh, this is an opportunity where companies can grow uh, value they can grow in margins if they uh, if they play it right so th the risk and opportunity both kind of lie in the same area yeah and Just, uh, if i can if i can add to that um, obviously as we've seen weather will play a massive role floods for example have really impacted the industry all in all uh, because it is based on live animals so major changes in industry patterns floods diseases these are probably uh, other key challenges that will come in uh, and probably uh, hit the industry i would just uh, add couple of lines to that because if you see the if the nature intrinsic nature of fmcg business uh, over the last 100 years there have been about 3 4 global recessions but this is kind of uh, the external environment proof when it comes to the nature of the products that we sell because these are consumables i think to be the biggest challenge is uh, to to have a sustainable supply chain because even in one thing that that has been that has passed the test in pakistan is that the last four year 20 to 21 the price increase on milk was only 7 to 10 percent to date we have taken 38 percent price increase and the swan data do that the industry has had an exponential growth so supply chain is the biggest challenge that we have to work watch out for okay uh, perfect uh, thank you for your response moving on to the next question uh, mr hasan raza is asking that uh, what are the primary reasons behind uh, the decline in gross margins if you compare it with other uh, players in the industry such as engro um, the margins have not declined as much as what the foods have faced so uh, could you highlight the reason behind it Uh, so the decline of margins is driven by um, the the inflation that hit us in summer, uh, which was the raw milk price increase. I think it hit the entire industry, and if uh, by that time I think you guys will get the full year report and the notes, you will be able to analyze that the engro dairy business, milk only business, was affected. Uh, it's just that there is a top line growth. so just as if, as we have grown in volume so have they uh, so that has partly offset it in their case but also i know from my experience having worked for them um, for quite a few number of years that this is the quarter in which ice cream business peaks uh, so that is kind of when you look at the consolidated figure it's uh, the the dairy numbers are hidden behind the frozen dessert numbers of right but it hit everyone so the dairy prices that happened in uh, the inflation that uh, the industry went through in summer it hit every player okay uh, so there's a follow up question from mr hasan and he's asking that the prices were increased uh, by around 30 to 50% as highlighted in the presentation during calendar year 22 but the margin but the revenues have only increased by 20% uh, so what is the reason behind that yeah so i think that's a very good question like i said there's a portfolio pivot so in the portfolio pivot means that there is a brand which up till last year was nearly 72% of our uh, revenue which was those things our strategy is to sell it profitably which even if it means that uh, we lose a little bit of volume we are happy to do it we want to grow in sustainable part of the market um, and if you take out those p uh, our growth was actually 37% so there is a decline in those three uh, which is on strategy which is part of the portfolio pivot uh, and that's where overall decline sometimes uh, can be little mistaken okay perfect thank you uh, the next question is that can you please touch upon how has the farm gate milk prices increased since the start of the year uh, what was the price at the beginning of the year and what is the current price yeah Okay, I won't go into specific pricing, but uh, uh, like I talked in my presentation, this it has been the biggest challenge for dairy industry this year. Uh, and naturally, when the so it's not just the pricing going up, pricing going up is an indicator that the the, the demand is greater than supply. Uh, so uh, these are the two challenges for the industry, which have driven pricing significantly. I mean, if I were to put a number. i think from beginning of the year to date uh, the pricing must have increased by nearly 
uh, around 45 percent by back of the envelope calculation. So that is the extent of inflation we are seeing there. And obviously, farmers are also facing this inflation the, in energy cost, in feed cost, in soybean uh, import. So they've also been affected. Um, so it's really important to work with the farmers, have a long-term plan, uh, which is to with our agri-development business and the industry uh, needs to come together and work on it. Through PDA, uh, we are leading that conversation as well. Um, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next question is from Mr. Akshay Thakur from Ismailikbal Securities. He's asking that cost of sales per revenue is increasing significantly and especially power and fuel costs and packaging costs. Any future plans for, com for company to cater this thing? Because we can see growth in revenue, but at the same time, cost of sales is also growing. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic question. And I think that is exactly what we, where we feel confident that we will be able to hit our targeted exact gross margin numbers. Because uh, if you look at the increase in power and fuel, uh, and also, uh, so we are significantly changing our energy mix. We will become, uh, I am pretty confident by the time we are, uh, we are done with our biofuel and solar project, both of these projects have been signed. Uh, we will have the cleanest energy mix in our business, in our production. Uh, so as a consequence of that, we expect our energy cost to come down significantly. The, uh, you've got to understand for dairy business, 55% uh, of energy that we use is utilized for steam production. That's what we are converting to biofuel entirely by the end of this year. The project is already signed, the contract awarded, it's underway. Um, and the second bit is solar, which we will uh, hopefully have running by March or within the next quarter uh, of 2023. So these are the two areas. That's why we feel confident that we will be able to, um, uh, you know, bring these energy costs down. And it will be a significant contributor to our margin increase. Also okay. on the packaging, also on the packaging, we are cognizant of the fact that one of the, one of the biggest uh, SKU uh, in, the, in the UHT milk uh, we were importing it from uh, from outside Pakistan, so we have some very robust plans to address costs overall, as Usman explained, from the energy uh, side of it, and also in terms of optimizing the localization of these packaging materials. So that should also start to trigger in uh, before the end of this year. And and okay. just to just to sort of add on to what we are saying, uh, I would like uh, everybody to be cognizant of the fact that these are management expectations and not any form of uh, investment advice. So um, you all need to be uh, sure and do your own background checks and working before you decide to make any decision. Okay, perfect. Uh, so the next question is uh, that you have mentioned about the target gross margins. Uh, so where do you intend to take it to? What are the sustainable gross margins of the company given the product pivot that you are striving to achieve? Yeah, so what we did was a benchmarking exercise. Uh, we were a dairy company. We looked at the companies uh, similar to us and we did a across the almost entire uh, p &L, a benchmarking uh, for costs for cogs and that's how we arrived at a gross margin which we took as a target for ourselves that look if we need to build a sustainable future for this business this is where we we will like to operate and then we said okay if we how do we get there and that's where we start to come up with all the projects that we just talked about in terms of saving in energy in terms of uh, you know optimizing packaging uh, and the portfolio pivot was also a part of it because if you grow revenue, the gross margin obviously improves. So uh, this is, uh, I, would, I wouldn't want to quote an exact number, but we did an, an extensive benchmarking. And from that benchmarking, and we looked at our portfolio, we'll get our current reality. And that's where we put up a benchmark for ourselves. And like uh, Khorab mentioned that we are fairly confident when we enter next year, we will be hitting the benchmark on the back of the last lap of uh, saving projects. 
Okay, so I see a lot of questions related to uh, the margins for different products, UHT milk and other value added segment. And everybody wants to know that if the management could share the range of the margins uh, segment wise or product wise. So that would Look, be I can't, I can't share the range, but what I will say is that, uh, let's put it this way, that the most margin equitable products uh, would tend to be the most value added ones. Uh, and the most volume oriented one, okay. as you would expect, would have a lower margins and they will play by scale. Okay. Um, so I think uh, there's enough experience in this in this room to understand uh, where the margins. Lie. Okay, I'm totally understandable. So moving on to the next question, uh, uh, the, the analyst is asking, can you please uh, comment on the market share? that has moved over the last two to three years and what sort of volumetric growth can be expected from Fauci Foods in each division? Yeah, so, I think... Uh, uh, yeah, sorry. KJ, please go on. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, there used to be a retail audit in this uh, market uh, prior to October 2021. Um, and then uh, because AC Nielsen wind up there, that particular, seg uh, that particular uh, segment of the business from Pakistan, now another player has just started off uh, from so the proxy that in industry takes is uh, um, the, the analysis that the packaging suppliers uh, give us so over the last three months if i see the projection uh, the top two players constituted about say 85 to 88 percent of the total market and then we were at number three or a distant number three as a player uh, so one of the top two players has uh, lost significant share in the last three four months, and the and the amongst those big two, the one player has gained the most in the market, and we have gained uh, the second highest share amongst uh, all the players. As we say that we have and we have indicated that we have about fifty four percent growth in the milk, and we are the fastest growing milk in the category. Uh, we must have gained about two and a half, three percent uh, overall market share uh, because these are all packaging suppliers estimations and not an independent research. So I am just being very cautious in terms of giving you the numbers. But amongst the top three, one has lost significant share. One of top two has gained the loins share out of it. And amongst the smaller players, we have the highest share. And uh, overall market versus same period last year, we have gained about uh, two to three percent of the market share as an industry. From a butter point of view, uh, we are the market leaders. Uh, there was a, we successfully defend our share and grew our share both in terms of volume and value. Uh, cheese in retail, we are very small. Um, we, we are very small at this point of time, but in the food services premium segment, uh, most international quick service restaurants uh, they are our clients. We are providing them bulk or the entire business as well. And there are some interesting developments um, that should improve uh, us in this particular game. Cream, we are very nascent. Uh, Cream, we launched January 2021, though our growth versus same period last year is very high, but the quantum of the business is still um, pretty, pretty small at this point of time. Thank you so much for your detailed response. Uh, so I will move on to the next question that is related to the impact of floods that how has it impacted uh, the supply chain of your raw milk? And uh, can you quantify the magnitude of it? Uh, so like I said earlier, what has specifically happened if you look at in a post flood scenario, although Sindh got affected and most of the milk production in Pakistan it happens across the river beds. <clears throat> so Punjab, uh, contributes to the bulk of it. Uh, but estimation of floods, the displaced animals, uh, again, there are different numbers being uh, quoted. Up to 1.5 million, million animals were displaced in floods. Uh, so what th that has done is that uh, there is, however, production going on. Large swaths of Punjab remained unaffected, uh, apart from uh, areas around Diji Khan and Rajapur. Uh, other than that, almost entire Punjab was not affected by floods. So what has happened now is because the entire sin was affected, they are now sourcing their milk from Punjab. So the demand on this part is uh, higher and the prices are going up. Uh, 
So in that's the impact in terms of exact percentage of productivity that has been affected or the mortality, the breakdown of that 1.5 million displaced. I, I think it's a little tricky to quote that number, uh, but we are very clear on its effects on the industry. The effect on the industry is um, in terms of uh, the price of now. Uh, but you've got to realize that floods is the last in this, uh, over the last two to three years, um, the demand on sourcing milk from Pakistan has gone up. Because of the devaluation, we the, the and the duties on import of powder, almost all the other associated industries like confectionery, bakeries, they have also switched, who used to import powder earlier, they've also now used to switch to local milk and the powder made from local milk. So that is where there is a demand and the prices are going up. Um, so that's the, the picture in terms of, uh, I think that's the detail I can share right now. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, the next question is, uh, with regards to the proportion of your sales, uh, that what portion is in uh, Punjab and what are in Sindh? And can you also share the ratio of your sales to institutional contracts, such as sales to restaurants? Yeah. I think like from a geographic point of view, um, North and KPK uh, happens to be our biggest region. Having said that, our highest growth in terms of percentage is coming from South and Karachi, where we have had a historically weaker footprint. Uh, we have a very growing food services business as well, uh, riding at the back of not only milk, but cheese and butter as well. Uh, from an institutional sales point of view, I would not like to get into specific, but we divide institutional as big corporations like uh, Unilever's. We classify institution as army institutes, both in terms of the milk and skim milk powder. And then we have a very big segment of food services, horecas, hotels, restaurants, cafes, hotels, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and we are growing in all those segments uh, from a business point of view. Yeah. So there's a follow-up question on that: what ratio of your sales are to the uh, military? Okay. I would. Uh, I think we have indicated one of that uh, contract in the presentation. Uh, about of the total three to four billion of the military uh, food and skin milk powder business, uh, three to five billion, we are doing about 1.4 billion at this point of time. Okay, thank you for uh, mentioning that once again. Uh, so the next question is related to the uh, potential of the export market and is the company planning to target that market in the future? Yeah. I think export is uh, going to be another very uh, exciting avenue, not only for us, for a lot of other companies. We have seen the likes of Shans and Nationals, which do fabulously well in terms of their export businesses. Uh, we have a very extensive portfolio and with uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of challenges that dollar devaluation brings in, uh, one opportunity is to create uh, export opportunities for the companies like us. Uh, we have already, we are already qualified uh, suppliers, uh, internationally qualified suppliers for some of the international quick service restaurants. Uh, we would love to explore that um, as we touched on that a bit. And then there is a big, uh, a big export market available for uh, other value added categories. Uh, generally, export is more suitable where the uh, shelf life of our products are is is much longer, so um, we are we are uh, excited about it, and there is some uh, work happening at that level. Okay, perfect. Uh, so the next question is uh, from Mr. Hassan. He's asking that given your focus on cost optimization, um, can we see uh, any new product rollout in the next twelve months? Yeah, I think like since twenty twenty one. Uh, we have been uh, we have been pretty regular in terms of introducing some exciting offers in Pakistan. January 2021, we launched uh, dairy cream. Uh, then April, May 2021, we brought in unsalted butter, which has done very well. Uh, this year, we have done slightly salted butter. This year, we have done flavored milk, chocolate flavor. Uh, so all these propositions are coming in, and we have a very 
a robust new product development process in place where at any given point of time we are evaluating different categories um, and it has to be margin accretive as we indicated earlier on as well. Uh, there are a couple of principles that we decide. One is that how big the segment is where we have to go. And then any segment that we would enter um, uh, from, a, from a dairy perspective, we have to have a superior uh, product proposition versus what's available in the market. So we have been writing that principle and that principle has given us success in the past. And uh, why not? I think uh, we, are, we are exploring different opportunities. We don't have global center of excellence as two of the international competitions, but we are working with some very good and capable flavor houses, very capable recipe developers to build, to bring in that international perspective to a local company, which is very eager to succeed in the local market. That's great. Uh, so yeah, moving on to the next question. Um, the analyst is asking that how much solar power do you plan on implementing and what is the estimated capex for it? So uh, uh, the solar power right now we are planning to put across is uh, one megawatt and uh, the approximate capex would be about 125 to 140 million. Okay, great. Uh, next question is that do you have any plans to enhance your fruit juice segment? We are not. The in, we are not in the category right now. We used to be in the category about a year back. We delisted the product then. And as I said, that there is a process in place uh, that we follow uh, and we are evaluating multiple products and uh, we are evaluating multiple segments and the size of the segment and our ability to compete in that particular segment. So uh, there are multiple uh, developments that are uh, going on right now. Um, I would stop here. I would not be able to indicate yes or no to this. Okay, thank you. Um, so uh, another question is that what is the maximum pricing premium do you feel you can charge or lose milk before it starts affecting sales? Look, over uh, last 11 years in the industry, it's a question which is very... Really uh, it does not have a straightforward answer. You've got to, when you view the entire loose milk in Pakistan, you've got to slice. Even today, you have loose milk being sold at 80 rupees and you have loose milk being sold at 200 rupees. So, uh, and the highest pool of loose milk, price pool of loose milk is the ideal one to be attracted to the dairy industry. And that even that is big enough uh, for the industry to uh, to to kind of explode. Uh, there are some positive developments here, by the way, um, and they are industry-wide and everyone's benefiting. All the key players are benefiting from it. Um, I think uh, very clearly, when you look at the role of the government and the regulators over the last five years by the effort of Pakistan Dairy Association, and uh, they've been able to recognize the value of Cons conserving the nutrition in milk, which in the entire supply chain of raw or loose milk is just lost, guaranteed oh. lost. And the impact that it has had on our, uh, on, on our nation's health. Uh, and I think I've, from the fora that I have sat in, this point is now clearly understood. What the governments and the authorities are now debating is how to, is how to go about it. With, with their given capacity. But I think it's a very interesting space to be in. It's because the, the moment this conversation starts of why packaged milk is good for the health of our nation and of our kids, it changes everything as it did in Turkey, as it did in India. And that is why you've got to recognize that the players like Friesland came to Pakistan to begin with. So I think we, after a very long time, the industry is moving in the right direction when it comes to converting from loose milk. Uh, so you've got to realize that, it, yes, it will be a function of pricing to a certain degree, but a 5% conversion does not require any pricing. It just requires a recognition of what happens uh, to... Uh, you know, the loose milk's nutrients 
in their supply chain and usage method. And a 5% conversion doubles the size of the industry, by the way. So um, I think the answer to conversion is more nuanced than purely price. Uh, and when you try to play price, the package industry, as it did with T-Creamer, uh, it's not sustainable. Uh, so it's really important to play it in the right way, uh, in a purposeful manner. Uh, and, I, I, and I do see traction there. Uh, in, and it's important for our country. Uh, it's not just in terms of industry, it's the right thing to do for our country. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, the next question is that at what revenue level you think the bottom line of the company will be in some kind of profit? And uh, when do you uh, think that the company will be able to achieve it? Look, um, I obviously for, you know, I, I would abstain from giving the answers in exact specific manner. But uh, look, what we are very confident of is that we are building the momentum in top line. We've got the cost dishes and we can see them working for us. Um, and I think if we keep hitting our straps, we keep growing, uh, we will turn the corner fairly soon. It's, let me put it this way, it's baked into our plans. And so far, we are tracking, we are on plan uh, in last uh, five or six months. Okay. Thank you for your answer. Um, so uh, the next question is, uh, since imported dairy products are not being imported as they used to previously, it still does not reflect in uh, fudgy foods. And uh, do our pizza and burger chains, other than McDonald's and KFC, use unbranded cheese or do you supply to them? Okay. Um, I think on the, first of all, on the import, uh, higher import duties and uh, difficult international supply chain logistics gave us an opportunity. And if you see that uh, we are the leaders in butter and we have tried to develop the category on that particular front, we will continue to do that. So from a salted to unsalted to a slightly salted, this is the same path where we all had seen Dur Park when it was available in the market. From a food services point of view, uh, we go as an ingredient in food services, not only us, but all the dairy businesses. So there we are uh, Noorpur, but, but we go as an unbranded because we are ingredient in there. Uh, other than the international quick service restaurant, the McDonald's and the KFC, there is a very huge market uh, which lays down at the bottom of the pyramid. This again is a market where the volumes are big, but the margins are very less. And uh, then we being a very scrupulous player and meeting the, the standards of uh, the food standards and the quality standards, uh, it has been uh, difficult uh, to penetrate into that particular segment. Uh, but there is a segment uh, above that and we are working on few uh, developments in there. Uh, so it's definitely in our radar because it is a market uh, and it is a big market. It is much bigger than the premium uh, cheese and the beer, mozzarella and cheddar cheese uh, accounts. Uh, penetrating in there is uh, a big challenge for a scrupulous player like us, but that's where uh, I said that uh, a very robust new product development process is laid out and uh, we are, we are not uh, turning our eyes off uh, from this particular opportunity. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next question is, uh, can you please touch upon the industry trends? Uh, what sort of volumetric growth was witnessed across uh, various business divisions and how did uh, 4G fared across each segment? Yeah. yeah, so like I said, I think in plain white milk, we've uh, the industry has grown massively 25% and we grew double by double that. Uh, in th the, the entire tea creamer has been on a decline since uh, uh, last quarter. It's lost about 30% and our decline is in line with the industry decline. So we haven't really lost shares there. Um, so these are the two, uh, as the industry stands today, this is where almost 85% of the, the play is. Uh, and that, that's how we paired it. 
Okay, thank you so much. Um, I don't see any other further questions in the chat box. So um, I would like to uh, say thanks to all the participants who have joined us and to the management of Fuji Foods for taking out time and conducting this session. Um, I would now request uh, the management, Mr. CFO and uh, the CCO uh, to say the closing remarks. AJ, if you would. Yeah, no, I think thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, I think the dairy industry overall environment is challenging, yet very exciting. Uh, we are, a, we, are a, we want to be a significant player in a very large growing dairy space. So the category would grow. We would like to grow with that category. Uh, we have an end in mind. There were a lot of questions that we did not uh, directly answer. Uh, but there's a lot of passion. There's a lot of work that is happening in this organization on the capability development of our people uh, and how we can actually make our brand stand out, how we can do the route and route to market distribution better and how we can control the costs. Um, so uh, the, the weather ahead seems to be challenging. Uh, we have a tailwind in terms of our top line growth and we have plans to improve our bottom line and inshallah ta'ala. Uh, with the trust and confidence, we would be able to turn around the business. On the financial side, uh, I think it's uh, pretty clear. We, we've also announced it uh, on PSX as well. Uh, there's some other than right issue that we are looking for. Uh, we've increased our uh, authorized share capital significantly by about uh, 11 billion. So uh, as Usman, our CEO, touched early on, that uh, we've got a very strong uh, group and we've got a very strong backing uh, from the group. And uh, I think with, with the right direction that we've taken and the issues that we're addressing, both in terms of cost as well as uh, uh, new products, um, I'm pretty confident that uh, we will turn, inshallah, very soon. Uh, just one, I would just like to add one thing here. We've talked about a lot of things. If you've seen our balance sheet, you're aware that uh, there, especially in the current environment, there is a significant interest cost that sits there. Um, and if we want to turn the business around, that is also something that has, we need to find a solution to. Um, and I think that's uh, on our radar and uh, we know exactly what to do with it. Uh, and uh, we will be able to uh, fix that big problem as well. So uh, we've talked about cost, we've talked about revenue, we talked about brand, but when you look at the PL, that's also a reality. And um, I think we are we are in a good space there and probably, uh, you know, we, we'll be able to talk more about it uh, in our next conferences. I'm, I'm, I'm very confident. Thank you uh, so much, Mr. Vaseem, Mr. Khuram and Mr. Usman Saab. It was a pleasure hosting you. And uh, um, I would like to thank the participants as well to, who joined us today. And uh, this is it from our side. Thank you so much for joining. Take thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you, thank you, thank you everyone. It was a real player. Thank you. Pleasure.